Hello and welcome to another Friday Sessions Quick Tip. Uh, in today's Quick Tip we're going to be looking at Momentum, the Cinema 4D plugin written by Andy Coates that I've been using to bring uh, virtual stipe data into Disguise when I've been testing some of the Disguise XR workflows. Um, this is a plugin that I've been using over the last few weeks um, while I've been helping Andy test it. Um, however, it's only just been released uh, publicly, so um, since I've had a few questions asking where to get this plugin from, now felt like um, a good time to uh, show you how, how to get hold of it and how to set it up and make it work. So let's jump in. So this is Andy's blog. Uh, Momentum is currently um, the top post on here. Um, I'm going to link to this in the description below. If we just scroll down a bit, there's a few uh, little bits of information um, about Momentum and then there is the uh, GitHub link in order to be able to download the project. I've done that already so I should just be able to open this up and then when, when I open Cinema this is what we'll see. Um, this is what we see with the uh, default uh, momentum project. We've got um, the three sides of our smart stage and then a camera which is going to bring us our positional data. Um, if I have a look at the camera it's got a uh, espresso tag applied to it and in there we can set the remote IP and the remote port um, and these correspond to um, our disguise session. So. Um, by default this is just a loopback address so we'll work on the same system that you are going to be using Momentum on. Um, if you're using uh, this on a separate computer on the network you just need to fill in the IP address of your Disguise server. So that's all pretty straightforward. Um, you'll see here that there's a, um, a couple of keyframes which gives our camera a little bit of movement and this is really useful just to keep this streaming positional data in while we get things set up on the disguise end. Gonna open up, uh, let's create a new project. We'll call it Momentum. Um, and then later on, I'm gonna need um, a notch block just to show the um, exposed camera working. So let's bring that in now while we're still doing the setup. And then we can load that. This will just take a couple of seconds for Disguise to get going. Okay, so here's our default Disguise project. Uh, just move the puck out of the way and then I've no need for our projector or our surface. So we can clean, clean the stage up a little bit. First thing we need to do is um, generate a device that's going to listen for our incoming positional data. So I'm going to create a new device and then we'll just call that Momentum. Um, the device type that we need is a screen position receiver. That brings this menu up. Um, I just need to open up the drivers and then we need to create a Stipe driver. And then the type is obviously Stipe driver. You'll notice this port number is the same as the one that I highlighted when we're in Cinema 4D. So those two need to match. And then I'm just going to engage this and we can close all these. You'll notice now that there's a tab opened up here which says automation and the green line underneath tells us that the data that we're receiving is valid. So that's that's looking good. We go back into our stage and generate a new camera. I'm just going to call this something like AR cam. And that will bring a new camera into our scene and position it right in the center. I can open up the settings for the camera, open up the tracking source, and you'll see the Stipe driver that we generated earlier. Click that, and now the camera is going to be following the path that's been given to it um, in momentum. So that's exactly as we like to see. So that's basically our, our AR camera following our start data. Um, just to kind of show this working a little bit better, I'm gonna bring in a notch block. 
this is the one um, that I created in an earlier Friday sessions um, tutorial on making AR sets so if you want to see how this was made and dig through some of the old videos um, we just need to give this um, a spatial mapping so set the exposable camera there we go so we've set, uh, we've set our uh, sync uh, AR camera to be the screen inside our spatial mapping and made sure that the block uh, knows to use the um, the d3 AR camera to parent that to the um, exposed camera inside of our notch block. So you can see our um, camera inside of our notch scene is now following the stipe tracking data. I'm just going to close that and if we go into our feed view, I'm just going to make this match my monitor. We can bring in um, an overlay so that we can see what's going on in our AR scene in our virtual world. So this is kind of it working. Um, I'm not overly pleased with um, the the demo um, movement data. Partly it doesn't really work because this is a um, a full set space and not just a smart stage. So we can pop back to um, Cinema 4D and edit the the animation that's that's bringing this data in so if I just go to our timeline view you can see these are the keyframes that are giving us our um, movement I'm just gonna uh, select them all and delete them we can grab our camera and then I'm just gonna zero this out in position and in rotation So all of this, because it's streaming the data live, is um, updating in our disguise scene. So here we go. So if we want to give this um, a little bit of movement, we could, uh, well, there's a few different ways we could do this. Um, one of the ways that I think is quite useful, if I generate a spline, like a circle spline, it's way too big. Let's just make the radius a meter. Oh, one centimeter, so small. Uh, a meter, and we'll set the plane to be XZ. Bring that back to somewhere near our camera. We can then use, um, so I'm going to relabel that camera path, and then if we just create an aligned spline tag that I'm going to attach the camera to, and then uh, we just need to drop our spline. Uh, into the spline field there. So now uh, if we move this position our camera will follow. We can just create a few keyframes so I've just uh, made sure that my playhead's at zero and control the red dot tells me that a keyframe has been dropped there and then uh, move to the end of the uh, move to the end of the timeline set this to 100 and then um, just control click to give myself another keyframe. So when I uh, press play, the camera should follow the spline, which gives us a, a bit of nice movement. You'll see that it's going to start and stop at the end there. If I just open up my um, timeline window again, we can see in the curves editor that um, there's some easing going on on these keyframes. So um, we can just select both of those. I can set linear interpolation and then we have a look that's um, a little bit smoother we're not starting and stopping like I say everything all the changes that we made here are constantly being streamed to disguise so if I pop back over here we can see that um, that animation data is updated and um, we're now getting that passing into disguise and that's being used inside our virtual scene in our notch block. So 
Um, all that we would be left to do is to um, set up some some different camera movements that kind of make sense for your for your R and D, and away you go. So I think that's it for today. Um, thank you for watching, and um, I hope you have some fun playing with momentum. Um, give myself or Andy a message if you have any problems, and um, we'll see you next time. Thank you very much. <laughs>